External tables have always been good for dealing with flat files, but complications have started to arise. Now, what do I mean by file complications? I track it all back to this guy. Back in the day, an Excel spreadsheet was capped at 65,536 rows. Those of you that are students of the powers of two will know that obviously somewhere in there, uh, there was some sort of integer limit that Excel was limited to. So 65K or uh, 64K in reality was where the limit was at. This was a good thing because if everyone was ever providing CSV files to you, you knew that if they came out of Excel, they were gonna be small manageable files because Excel was capped at 64K. Of course, Excel being I'd argue probably the world's most popular database because every single person wants to drag data out of their beautiful Oracle systems or SQL Server systems or Postgres systems and dump them into a nice, unsecure, unprotected format called Excel. It's a sad thing. Excel, because of its popularity, got bigger. And I think probably about Excel 2007 onwards, somewhere around there, uh, you can now put a million or two to the power of, what's that, two to the power of 20 rows into an Excel spreadsheet. Once you get to a million rows, you're at that point where, as I point there, you really should have used a database. And in fact, well before that, you should have used a database, but as we go, people still use Excel. What this means, unfortunately, when it comes to external tables, is that we're no longer getting CSV files from people because the files are simply too large to manage. We start getting files that are compressed. In fact, the example here I've got here is a gzip compressed. There are other zip, gzip, etc. What happens when you put a compressed file as a source for an external table? Well, unsurprisingly, we're gonna have some problems. We can see here, I've simply told the database to try read that compressed file. It's assuming just a nice flat format ASCII or UTF-8 file with obviously no compression. So when we try to read it, it's just gonna reject all the rows. It has no knowledge or no in inherent knowledge about the file format that's coming in besides what we tell it in the database. That presented a bit of a problem because the vast majority of data now, as it got larger and larger, was being provided to us in typically compressed format or some other particular format. The preprocessor option was invented back in Oracle 11 to solve this. And this is a really, really cool thing. The preprocessor is a command that will be run as your external table is processed and it will be applied to the file in question. So here, if I look at my little batch file, I'll call it decomp.cmd. You can see it's just as a gzip minus dc, minus d means decompress, c means uh, put it through to standard out. Percent one means take in the file name that's passed to it. The external table DDL will take this file name and pass it into as a parameter to the program that you've nominated as a preprocessor. So this will uncompress the file name that's passed. The C means pump it out as standard output. So the external table will read that standard output and use that as its input. So what this is saying is, here's my table, take my compressed file, uncompress it on the fly, pipe the output back to me. The database will then consume that output and put it through its normal external table parsing facilities. And as a result, I took a compressed file and now I can now query it as if it was an uncompressed file. I never had to uncompress it physically and store it somewhere. It was uncompressed on the fly and sent into the external table parser. That's very, very cool. The file names will be passed as parameters. If an external table has multiple file names, they'll be passed in situ all the way along so you can access all of them. You do need to take care, a little bit of care with windows and paths. One of the things that people often get caught out with here with the preprocessor option is for security reasons. The database will launch that with absolutely no environment set because we wouldn't want to pick up the standard Oracle environment because it's got access to the data files, etc. So you are in charge of explicitly setting what paths you need to pick up access to executables, etc. Generally, I fully qualify the path names just to uh, avoid any issues. Similarly, under Windows, sometimes you need to set an environment variable called Windows root so the database knows where the Windows installation is. Check out that blog post I've got there which shows you what you might need to do to run certain Windows commands. It's just an environment variable you need to set under Windows.